6 is what we refer to as a function g. It's the same thing as it being called f. This question could be referred to as h, it could be referred to as f, it could be referred to as g. It doesn't really matter. Okay? I was going to refer to it as f, just, just, for, just for the sake of our calculator, okay? Now what this function is, is whatever number you're using, what you have to do is you get the number 3, you do 5 times that number, and you add it onto 3. Then you uh, you square that number, and then multiply it by minus 2, and you add them all together. So long story short, 3 plus 5 times the number we're talking about, minus 2 times the number we're talking about squared. Now, there's two distinct parts to this question, okay? There's what's referred to as a uh, domain, and the other part is called the codomain, or range, okay? So, domain refers to your x values. So, the domain in this question would be minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Does anybody get that? Uh, I got it from up... Oh, sorry. My fault. Uh, it's minus 1 to 4. Sorry. I was looking at the second question, not the first question. Uh, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So there's always a, it always tells you what the domain is. Is that everybody all right with that? Domain refers to the inputs or the outputs? First to the inputs. Basically the numbers that will end up going in here. Now, in the days before the Casio calculator, no, <coughs> the ice age, what we would have had to do was this. We would have had to write this out a couple of different times. We would have had to do f of minus 1, f of 0, f of 1. And what we would have had to do every time is we'd have to replace in the number in question and we'd have to write it all out. Now, that's no longer the case, but I still want you to be aware that it, it is happening. It's just that the calculator is uh, doing it for you. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, I know. You got a lot of marks for doing the same step over and over and over again, just with a different number. Okay, these days it's all going for you. Write down the points, and you write down, you write down, uh, you write down the points, and you draw the graph. That's where all your marks are going these days. Okay, so what what would have happened was I would have put this in. I would have got three. Uh, that would be minus two, three minus five, minus two. 3 minus 5 minus 2 is minus 4. Okay, so minus 1 would turn it at, when you use an input of minus 1, the output is minus 4. When you use an input of 0, the output is uh, 3. When you use an input of 1, uh, no, it doesn't go up in a sequence. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 minus 2, 6. Now, the sure way of doing this, without going old school and realizing what's going on, is that the calculator will do it for us. It doesn't matter if it's called g of x, f of x, h of x, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is it stands for our function. We go to our mode, we press the table function. This tells us our function. Now what it we want is 3 plus 5 times the input. We're going to use x for our input. Minus 2 times the uh, input squared. Everybody cool with that? Now, we then go to our start and end refers to our domain. Starts at minus 1, ends at 4. We go up in gaps of 1. So, step of 1. And look, long behold, this is what your calculator does for you. It tells you that minus 1 is minus 4. 0 is 3, 1 is 6, and then the last ones are 5, 0, and minus 9. So, 5, 0, and minus 9. Is everybody alright with that? Now, what I need you guys to be able to write down in your exam is uh, you realise that these guys here are the outputs, the other ones are the inputs. Inputs is always domain, outputs, codomain. Okay? Now, once we do that, 
What we're going to do next is we're going to uh, write, you have to write out all the points. That's one thing I would demand of you. So when you're looking at the calculator, okay, well actually I might try this. Never tried this before. Just a bit of, nah, it doesn't work. Nah, nah, it's going to see if I can take a picture of all the points, but it won't work. Now, uh, so what we're going to get here is this, guys. We're going to have minus 1, 4, uh, 0, 3, 1, 6, 2, 5, uh, 3, 0, and 4, minus 9. Now, when you're doing these questions, what I ask you to do is I want you to look at the codomain or the outputs. What's the biggest value? What's the smallest value? Six all the way down to minus nine. How many blocks are you going to need to make that work? What's the difference between six and minus nine? If I call that six, whoa. Now, I I don't like. Why would I write in every single number? That's a pain. Okay, so here's what I suggest you do. I suggest you just go down every two numbers. Okay. That's the x-axis, so that'd be 0, that'd be minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8, minus 10. Everybody happy enough with that? And then, you can see there's my axis there. Now I need to draw this, okay? So what are my points? Okay, uh, on this axis, you see that I'm going across in twos. Is there any reason why I should do that? It just uh, just stretches out more and makes it easier to draw. Okay, I'll explain myself in a second on that. Okay, just give me a minute until I'm finished this. Uh, so minus one and minus four is here. Minus four. Calculator. No, this the first point is minus one. Minus four. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I see what happened there. Minus one, minus four, yeah. Next one. Zero three, Zero, three yeah. One. one. Yeah. Uh, two. two and five, yeah. Three and zero. Four and minus nine, okay. And what you have here would be a it is a bit at the top, okay. Just trying to do a smooth transition on the on the turn, okay. Better than what I did. Now, uh, guys, that you can see there that that's a uh, N-shaped curve. What makes it an N-shaped curve? What makes it an N-shaped curve without even doing the calculator part is when you have a minus x squared, it's N-shaped. When you have a positive x squared. U-shaped. Okay. Let's go for U-shaped. Now, uh, so that's the first question there. Now, I was talking to you regarding scaling, okay? So, in question 10, we have two diagrams. Uh, can anybody in the class tell me what type of diagram would the first one turn out to be? Oh, dear. This one here is an N-shaped curve. How did you know that, Cameron? Because there's a minus x squared, and that's how Lee knew it, okay? Now, there's a minus x squared is why it's going to be n-shaped. And what about the other one over here? This one here? It's just going to be a line. Oscar, how did you know that was just going to be a line? There's no squared. It means it's going to be a line. Okay? There is a squared in the other one. It's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be a N-shaped curve. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to go to both of them separately. And you're going to do each one separate. So, what's that? 5 minus X. See? Uh, they should have done that. Just completely undid all my work there. 5 minus X. Minus 2X squared, yeah. What's the start point for this one? Uh, just give me one second with that. I'll come back now. Minus 2 to 3, I oh, know I can reset it, okay, what do I do, oh yes, so I forgot the uh, 
minus 5 minus x minus 2x squared minus 2 to 3 step of 1 now we've got to write down all these points okay so uh, 2 minus 1 minus 1 4 0 5 I'm going to have a hard time remembering that yes Lee Anyways, zero 05, I'm just writing down the points that I got on the calculator, is that okay? Yeah, no, I'm just asking. Yeah, what do what you want? Um, so if it was G, uh, whatever, X equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then it would be a flat line. It will be, I still have to do it. I haven't, I haven't got that far yet. Yeah. yeah, it's still a flat line. It just, uh, it, it, it depends on it. Just get it. Just it's it's a flat line going this way versus a flat line going that way. Yeah, but it's if there's no square. Yeah, yeah. If there's no square, it's definitely a uh, straight line. Okay. So where was I? Uh, two minus five and three minus sixteen. Two minus five and three minus sixteen. Everybody okay with that? Now, don't draw your diagram now. I want all the points before I even attempt to draw scales. Reason being is if I start drawing this now, and I draw it from minus 60 and all the way to plus 5, and then my line comes along and my line has a bigger value, I won't be able to fit my line into my graph. Uh, long story short, get every point before you draw the graph. Okay? So I have to go back up to the top, and now I have to do g of x equals uh, as a 1 minus 3x, was it? So I have to do this one. Now th these ones are easy, okay? Because I know that it has a slope of minus 3. How do I know it has a slope of minus 3? Minus 3 in front of the x. If that was a 1 plus 2x, the slope would be 2. It's whatever number comes in front of the x. If it's a line, it tells you the slope. So you, you'll see a pattern here, okay? So there's no g of x button. We just put it in as f of x. And we do 1 minus 3x. We start from uh, minus 2 to 3, step of 1, minus 2, 7, minus 1, 4. Now, minus 2, 7, minus 1, 4. What you know is happens from 7 to 4? Goes down 3. It goes down by whatever number is in front of the x. So what's the next one? 0, 1. Add 1 after that. 1 minus 2. 2 minus 5 and 3 minus 8 and that's that's just because it's a straight line okay now uh, what you have to do is you have to document your you have to document your largest x value and your sorry your largest y values so anybody see the largest y value 7 is the largest y value I'll get a better there. Seven's the largest y value. What's the smallest y value? Minus eight would be if I was just drawing one diagram, but it's actually the minus sixteen over the other side. Both into account. That's what I mean. You need both sets of points and you're gonna draw them both into account. I have to go all the way from seven down as far as sixteen, okay? So just want to control group these, make them smaller. I know, I know. Yeah, see, I saw that. I never saw that before. Now, here we go, guys. Gonna need as much uh, space as humanly possible, so we'll work. Go dead center, roughly here, because it's like three to the right, two to the left, so it's very central. And I have to go from seven. So I'll, I'll choose the number 8, uh, I know, yeah, error, 8, okay, I have to go as far down as minus 16, so that's going to be 24 blocks, uh, I might try it in 2 starting off, we'll see if I can pull this off or not, oh, what the hell? now, Minus two, minus four, minus six. I 
Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do after this, guys, is we're going to uh, draw on our x-axis. Now, if I don't want a really, really sharp turn, what if I did it like this? If I did one, two, three, four like that, what would happen? My graph would be very sharp. If I broaden that out, it will turn into something a bit more easily manageable. So, even if I was to go across three blocks at a time, it'd make the whole drawing much more manageable. So, what I'm going to do instead of packing everything in like this, is I'm going to uh, I'm going to draw it like uh, I'm going to do minus one. I'm going to use three blocks this time, okay? And that will really broaden it out because I have I have enough space to pull it off. Okay, you could even do four blocks, whatever. Now let's start off with the uh, with the curve. Minus two, minus one. Minus one, yeah. Minus one, four. Uh, zero, five. Yeah. Uh, one, two. Uh, two minus five. And three minus sixteen. Okay. And what we have here is a won't be a difficult enough one. Okay, there you go. Now, when drawing a curve, you have to draw every line, every point. When you're drawing a line, what's the what's the what's the quick way out when you're drawing a line? Draw the first and the last and join them together. Okay, and it's, you, you save a bit of time. So minus two and seven is, uh, I'll use a different color. Minus two and seven is up there. And then three minus eight, all the way down here. Come on. Now, we draw link them together. And you can see that, uh, you can see that there's two points of intersection. Now, what they what they want you to do is from your graph write down the coordinates of the points of intersection of F and G. Where is F and G the same? Well, it's the same when you have an X value of minus one and the Y value of four, and it's also the same for an X value of two and a y value of minus five okay now they also want me to verify this by solving the equations now what to solve the this is the hard part right what to solve the equation g of x equals f of x min what is g of x what is f of x so if i was to uh If I was to work over this side of the part, okay, and I wrote down g of x equals f of x. When are the outputs? When are the outputs for both functions the same? For the same inputs. So you understand. No matter which function you're drawing, whether it's the line or the graph, when you use an input of minus one, what's the output for both of them? How do I know that for? How do I know minus one four is a point on both graphs? To intersect. So basically, when f of x equals g of x, it means when you use the same input, both graphs will give you the same output. Therefore, they both have the same point. Okay? So what they're asked to do is verify the x values in part one by solving this equation. If I if I if I solve this, what two x values should I find? I should find minus one and two. They're the two answers, aren't they? The, the, the two graphs are equal to each other when the input is minus one or the input is two. Okay, so let's let's show you how to do this. Okay, they're saying at g of x equals f of x. G of x is one minus three x. F of x is five minus x minus two x squared. I'm going to move everything to the left hand side. I'm going to get two x squared. I'm going to get minus three x. And then it's when I bring the x over to your side, it's going to be plus 1x, which is minus 2x. I then have 1 take away 
5, which is minus 4. I could do a reference number, or I could divide by 2. Divide by 2. Uh, minus 2, isn't it? What are the two answers we're expecting again? Minus 1 and 2. Okay, let's find out. What's the reference number, guys? Okay, here's what I want you to do. Okay, reference number is the first, it's the number that comes in front of the x squared multiplied by the number at the end, which is minus 2. We need two, we need two numbers that multiply to give you minus 2, but yet when you add them, they give you minus 1. I'm going to ask for minus 2 plus 1. Is everybody right with that? Minus 2 plus 1. We're going to put in minus 2 plus 1 equal to 0. And then we're going to uh, see which ones we can uh, solve it. And we get x minus 2 equals 0. That means x equals 2. x plus 1 equals 0. x equals minus 1. What's got the results we got earlier? The two x values are minus 1 and 2. What? That's, that's a really good idea. Uh, Cameron said that if we didn't do this graphically, all right, and we wanted to find out the points, if I substitute in 2 to either, either formula, because remember, they both contain the same points, I'll find out that the y value is uh, minus 5 when I use 2, or it'll be 4 when I use minus 1. Uh, it doesn't ask you to do that, it just says verify the x values, but if you wanted to find the full point, you could do it that way. Okay. Uh, so look, 